Hey, welcome back to 3 and 1 in our midweek on our Wednesday nights. We are thriving in Babylon. We, we are understanding that the world around us is much like it was for uh, Daniel in the Old Testament. It was not a place that was always receptive to believers. And here we are in Christianity feeling the same way in this day and age. And we have talked about how Daniel kept his faith and how last week we need to be prepared. We need to understand there's going to be trials and challenges, but we need to be prepared to address the struggles in Babylon. Well, tonight is about hope. And, and hope is a word that's been corrupted so much in modern times. See, because at one time, hope, whether it was secular or otherwise, was generally biblical hope. It was hope in something greater than us, not hope we win the lottery, not hope we, our sports team wins. So if you were asked, hey, what is biblical hope? What would you tell people? You see, because understanding biblical hope means understanding who God is and that God is sovereign, meaning totally above all things, separated out, to try to use as quick layman's terms as I can. God is sovereign. We, do, we don't get to make him up. We, do, we, we don't get to tweak him. We, do, we don't get to do any of that. And that God is consistent. God is always truthful. God never lies. God is always consistent. God is, was, always will be. So that's where we are. Let's go to Romans 8, verse 28, my favorite chapter in, Rome, in Romans, one of my favorite verses. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and, 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 and sisters. And having chosen them... He called them to come to him, and having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. It's the beginning of that, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God, is the one where some people go, well, see, everything should be rainbows and unicorns if God's making it work out. No, that's not what that means, because God is sovereign, God is different than we are. He created us. So having true hope is that God has guaranteed us that even the worst situations in our life, and some of us are in some real bad places, even those situations for those who love God, not everybody, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose, for God knew his people in advance. He chose them to become like his son. And at the end, it says, and having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. See, for us following Jesus, our hope is that God will make things right in the end. Folks, I'll tell you, I, it's, it's often that we get challenged as, as pastors and as teachers at a church to either teach the book of Revelation or to never teach the book of Revelation. And if we teach the book of Revelation, then we better teach it the way people want to hear it. And what they really want is they want me to tell them who the Antichrist is and is he here yet. And I can't do that. I'm, I'm not in that position. Script, script, script is clear that, that neither eye nor ear will know. But I will tell you this. The end of Revelation is a guarantee. And if God is sovereign, if we're trusting in biblical hope, God is sovereign, everything there, the end of the story says Jesus wins. Those of us who believe with Jesus, then we win. We win. A God who is sovereign, and that changes the way we get to look at things. And that's, gets, that's, that's how we can look at a situation like Babylon. And at the end of the day, know that all we have to do is remember that in the end, God is in control. Those of us who believe and follow in his son, Jesus, are guaranteed. Not wishful thinking, guaranteed 
the hope that in the end, Jesus wins. All right, I'll see you next week as we continue to thrive in Babylon.